Hey everyone, it's Rochelle here with Losing It on Keto. And in this video, what I'm going to make is a potato wedge. Uh, I've got big ideas for this, but for now, I'm just going to focus on, on making a potato wedge. So um, one of the ideas, or the, the main impetus for this, was I used to, when I was following the standard American diet, I love chicken Vesuvio with Vesuvio potatoes or Greek chicken with the potatoes. And I wanted to have a facsimile of that. And I had made the mashed potatoes. I had made the tater tots. And I got to thinking, how can I make a wedge out of that, etc. And so this is what I came up with. I'll walk you through it. And I'll also tell you this is the second time I'm making the recipe. Because the first time I made it too much like a breadstick. And I'll explain what happened and how I had to adjust. So first of all, what I have in here is I've got um, steamed egg whites that I've sent through my electric grater, and that's 100 grams. Okay? And now I'm starting to formulate this notion of an all-purpose dough, which I'm going to do a separate video on. But I've got my breadcrumbs here, and what got me thinking is these breadcrumbs I'm thinking is like my flour slash nut flour replacement. So I'm going to use 50 grams of this. And if you've made this, you know how light and fluffy it is and why I would get the idea of this serving as like a flour replacement or a nut flour replacement, if you will. So while doing PSMF, you know, I don't do, I don't do nuts or seeds. And I have to tell you, I weighed myself on November 14th. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm getting a different result here. Why I'm not getting down to 51 here. I mean 50. All right, there we go. Nope. Okay. And, uh, and I found that I lost 4.2 uh, pounds. Hmm, I wonder if this is time to change the batteries because it's, it's fluctuating on me here. I think it's time to change the batteries. Okay, well anyways, I'm going to go with that for, uh, for 50 grams. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to say good enough and change the batteries on this. Um, so anyways, I lost 4.2 pounds. And I haven't, while I've been eating protein sparing modified fast or high protein low fat low carb um uh foods uh i haven't tracked now in six weeks so i would characterize the month of um october as a stabilization month so after all of those months of strict psmf with we uh, weighing measuring and then not doing that in October and having that kind of be a, a steady, steady month. And then in two weeks since then, still not weighing or measuring, but losing 4.2 pounds in 13 days. I don't know, guys, this is working. So anyways, it's pretty, pretty exciting for me. And so what I'm finding is, as I've stabilized, continuing to eat PSMF, is allowing for me to even lose more weight without weighing or measuring. And I've mentioned before that I'm within my last 20, 25 pounds or so. So it's super exciting time for me, especially going into the holiday. Uh, but anyways, so with the success I'm having and just incorporating PSMF meals and still losing without weighing and, tra and tracking, it just inspires me more and more to come up with new ideas and hence here we are so 
you know, not going back to keto with the nut flowers, etc. So anyways, long about roundabout to say why I want a PSMF flour replacement. And that's what I'm doing with these, with the PSMF bread, um, uh, processed into, into breadcrumbs using the food processor, super light and fluffy. So I've got hundred grams of egg whites, 50 grams of my PSMF breadcrumbs. Now I want 56 grams of shredded mozzarella. And this is not pre-shredded because I didn't want the starches and such. So took a block and shredded it myself. And so we're going to use 56. Think of this as like a PSMF fathead dough. All right, there's 56 grams. This is my version of a keto fathead dough as a PSMF dough. Okay, so we've got that. And then what we want... And don't worry if you don't have this. I've got the baked potato keto chow. I'm going to use this. But if you don't have this, just replace this with 42 grams of, um, a, uh, of a pro unflavored protein powder. And this happens to be a milk protein isolate. So if you have that, that's great. If, if you have a whey or a whey milk protein casein blend that's unflavored, that's fine too. Okay, but 42 grams, and if you want, you could do 40 grams of the um, protein powder and two grams of acacia fiber, um, because that's essentially what the keto chow is. But if you don't have the acacia fiber, then just go with 42 grams of the protein powder. Don't, don't sweat it too much. All right, so we've got that in here. Now I wanna add, um, oh, and I need one more, I have, my toasted gelatin. So I want a tablespoon of this. This is the uh, the toasted gelatin that comes from um, the uh, mashed potato recipe um, that was Chris Cooking Nashville's idea that he adds. So anyways, there's the uh, the toasted gelatin and it's looking like I'm getting low, so I better toast some more which is just dry uh, dry sauteing this in a, in a skillet pan. So I had made a whole jar full, and now I'm, I'm getting down, so i got to do more. Anyway, so we've got that. And then I want a teaspoon each of garlic powder. And onion powder. And you can season this however you like. This is just what I like. But this does need seasoning because it's rather bland if you don't season it. And then I'm going to do a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. So I'm using the Redmond salt teaspoon. And then a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Now for this next one, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I have it. When I ordered some flavors, I found this, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. But it's a mashed potato flavoring. So I'm going to do a half a droplet. It's pretty, pretty concentrated. But like I said, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. If you don't have that, you know, one thing you could do is, uh, is you could do a butter extract. <clears throat> okay, and now for the last ingredient, I'm going to do 227 grams of Greek yogurt. This is non-fat plain, so 0% plain. You can use Faye. Um, <clears throat> my recent favorite is Nancy's. 
Um, but I'm going to use up what I have. But Nancy's, which I can only find at Whole Foods, but um, Nancy's has a ton of protein. So my other one is Stonyfield. But look at this. This has 16 grams. This has 22 grams. And both of these are... Um, well, this one has a little bit higher carb. Oh, let me see. Seven carbs. The Faye has five, I believe. And this has eight. So anyways, I like... I like what I'm seeing with Nancy's, and um, and it also turns out to be my favorite cottage cheese as well. So, for what it's worth, I thought I'd share that with you. But anyways, I want 227 grams. So another um, thought I had for this recipe was, you know, I do a lot with cottage cheese, but... You buy these big cartons of yogurt, and honestly, I wanted to find more use for the yogurt uh, because I wanted the yogurt that I purchased not to go to waste. And I was only using it in the Caesar dressing and the mayo. Well, now I'm finding that I can use it here, and um, I have an idea that I want to try this in my bread recipe as to replace the cottage cheese. So I'm going to do that here soon. But I'm looking to use more and more of this cottage the, of the yogurt to replace the cottage cheese. Another um, another reason why is I recently had dental surgery, oral surgery, and I had to be on antibiotics. And I like the probiotic, the um, the microbes that I'm getting from this yogurt to counter what happened by taking antibiotics. So, for, all, uh, for both of those reasons, um, I was looking to replace cottage cheese in more recipes with, with yogurt, and this works out beautifully. All right, so those are all of our ingredients. Now I'm just going to give this a, a stir here. And what I'm doing is, I'm looking to, to press this down just to incorporate that protein powder in particular because it's so thirsty. So I'm kind of just scraping down, pressing down to get the yogurt incorporated. And then the cheese and the yogurt are my binders. And I'm looking to make a dough here. And you'll see how this comes together here in a second. And you see how that's starting to come together as a dough. So you can start to see where I would get the notion of this being kind of my PSMF version of a fathead dough. You know, because you think about it, fathead is pretty much cottage cheese, uh, almond flour, and mozzarella cheese. And so I still got a bit of mozzarella, um, the breadcrumbs in replacement of the almond flour, and then the yogurt in replacement of the, the cream cheese. All right, I'm going to put some gloves on, get my hands dirty here to get this incorporated into a ball. And what I want to do is I want to get a baking sheet and line it with parchment paper as I prepare these. And now you can make these in any shape you want. I say a wedge. You can make these into a french fry uh, type shape. <clears throat> and I've got, I've got ideas for this.
I I've got lots of ideas for this and I'll keep you posted and you follow this channel and you'll see but I've got I've got big plans for this okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my hands to get in there and kind of treat this like you would when you make meatballs or kneading or kneading a dough I haven't found that I need to refrigerate this but if you find it hard to work with you know you could chill the dough if you wanted And then, you know, if you had a particular shape you wanted to cut this into, say thin french fries, um, you could chill the dough and make it that much, that much easier. But you see how easy that formed a ball? You see how that all came out of there? So, perfect. All right, so now we've got our ball in the notion I had here is this to me is like a, a potato okay and so I cut this just like I would just like I would a potato and if you want if you don't want it into a a round ball you know you can make it like the shape of a of a potato whatever your heart f desires here okay so I'm gonna cut this in half And when I'm going for 16 wedges, so I'm looking to produce eight wedges per half. So I'm just going to keep having this. So in this half, I'm going to cut it in half again. And in this half, I'm going to cut it in half again. And if it's a little bit crumbly in spots, don't worry, just use your hands to bring it all together. So now I've got four out of the half. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut each of these again. But if this is how you think you want them, you can leave it as it is. But I like, I like to get eight on each side. So there's one. And you see that it's kind of flimsy, so I just press it, press it together. Pretty, pretty forgiving. All right, I'm gonna do the same to, same to this one. Cut this in half. Press it together. So I've got four now. And I'll get another two out of this and another two out of that. And that's how I'll get my eight. So here's that. And here's that. And now two more out of this half. So there you guys go. There's eight. Two, four, six, eight. Now we'll do the same thing here. Okay, so again, I'm going to cut this in half, this half in half. Then I'm going to cut this half in half. And then this half in half. So there's my two, 
and then this is going to produce another two. And two. Okay, and now same thing. I'm going to cut this in half. And now I'm going to cut this one in half. And now our last one. Pretty, pretty simple. And I'll take some of this and just press this together for, for one. It, it's starting to get a little stickier. So there's one and then there's our last one. Okay. Now, let me wash my hands in the last step. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spritz these with some avocado oil spray for a browning effect on the top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. So I'm just spritzing with avocado oil spray, much like I did with my bagels, for those to, to brown on top. And maybe I'll sprinkle a little more salt here. And then, um, like I said, 30 minutes in the oven. I'll come back in the next segment. And, uh, and before I do so, one last thing I wanted to mention before I come back is uh, I mentioned that I made this before and then I realized I needed to adjust. And the reason why was because my first attempt turned out more like a breadstick. And it turned out like a breadstick more than a potato wedge because remember, I'm going for what that inside of a potato uh, is like in terms of the texture. And so the first time I made these, I did not use uh, egg white, the, the egg white that I added here. So I had too much in the way of breadcrumbs, and I realized, okay, the way to get this inside not to be a not to be a breadstick is what I learned in the tater tots to uh, use the, the egg white. And if you see, when you cut up an egg white, it, it almost it looks like a cut up potato, raw potato. Um, so, so that's where I got that idea from. Um, so anyways, when I made that adjustment, um, that, that did the trick. Now again, you're not going to have a traditional potato wedge and this and fool anybody. But for anybody who's, who's doing PSMF, I have to tell you, there's something psychological about having a side such as this. Like the other night we had burgers and my family ate french fries and I had this. And just mentally, I didn't feel deprived in any way. Um, so, so anyways, I did want to mention to you that my fail was because I didn't, didn't, I used too much of the breadcrumb and therefore it was too much like a breadstick. So there we go, guys. I'll be back in the next segment uh, after I bake these for uh, 30 minutes. Okay. I'll see you back. Okay, guys, I'm back in the segment. The oven just went off. I took out the wedges, the potato wedges. And I'm now going to go ahead, and I could let these sit here and cool. Uh, they're very hot because, like I said, I literally just took them out. So obviously, as they cool, they, they firm up that much more. But you can see, oops, how, um, how they've crisped up. Crisped up. And if you would like... You can serve them with a little bit of sour cream, which is what I'm going to do. It's all dependent upon your macros.
here we go. And like I said, that's the bottom. Mm. So good. I can't describe to you guys the the crispiness on the outside and yet the softness on the inside. And that's the effect of um, the key being the egg white. So, so good, you guys. And then I feel, I, I um, taste the, the seasonings and you can season them however you want. But, oh, so, so darn good. Um, and like I said, I've got all kinds of ideas um, for this, because I'm, I'm treating this as like a base, a base dough. So I've got savory ideas, I've more savory ideas and sweet ideas with this, because I just love, like I said, how it's crispy on the outside and softer on the inside. It's got give to it. So anyways, guys, there you go. Um, uh, potato wedges, um, that you can have as a side. And you can, like I said, make these into french fries, which is what I did. Uh, I had it as a side to my burgers. And, uh, and so anyways, guys, um, as always, hope this is helpful. Hope you give it a try. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.